Wisniewski of the Upside to Aging, and today I'm speaking with Chris McCabe of Life with Grams. Chris has joined us today to talk about her experience caregiving with her Grams Mary during the pandemic. Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to share a little bit more about the COVID story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, me too. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, why you started Life with Grams? Yeah. So I'm Chris. I'm 34, living in Chicago. Um, I'm a freelance photographer as well as graphic designer. And prior to caregiving, I did a little bartending on the side as well. Um, taking care of my grandma was just something that I felt I needed and I knew that I had to do. Uh, she unfortunately was in a nursing home not doing well for a few months after living with my mom for some time. And I just felt that I had to take care of her. Uh, Life with Grams kind of happened rather serendipitously. I just, you know, was on Instagram posting our journeys of us living together and it kind of just grew from there with other caregivers and other um, Alzheimer's and dementia stories. Oh, I love that. I got, I got chills. Um, <laughs> well, can you tell us a little bit about Grams then? So Grams is Mary, right? Uh, could you just give us a little background on her? Yeah, so my Grams was born and raised in Queens, New York. She never left. She was a true Italian New Yorker through and through. Um, and then we started noticing um, she had a stroke in 2007. And from there, we kind of noticed that maybe she shouldn't be left alone always. Like someone should go check up on Grams. So uh, my sister had a house and she had like an in-law suite there. So my Grams went and lived with my sister. And then my sister had a baby and we started noticing Grams doing kind of weird things with the baby. Um, so my sister was like, I love you Grams, but we don't know what to, like, I can't keep having this in my house. So my mom was like, okay, I'll take Grams. <laughs> so it was like, Grams was just getting passed around. Um, and she was with my mom for about two years and that's when the dementia really started hitting. It was getting worse and worse and my mom didn't know what to do from there. Uh, so my mom placed her in a nursing home because she saw that she needed more attention and care. And um, yeah, so that's kind of how Grams got to, to where she was today. <laughs> uh, but Grams has always been my best friend. Uh, she's always been a really spunky, uh, full of life kind of person. So seeing her in the nursing home like that I just knew that um, I had to make a change. I had to do something. Yeah, and what a big change that is. Um, but it, incredible, the family support that she had uh, during the time when she needed the, the most. Um, yeah. Yeah, so did, you're in Chicago now. Did she make the move from New York to Chicago? So in between, uh, my sister was living in New York. My mom actually lived in Vegas. So I planned a road trip for my grandma. We moved her from New York to Las Vegas. And me and my gram had this two week amazing road trip. We stopped off like all over the country and just had kind of the best time before she moved in with my mom. And then once my mom was like, I don't think I could do this forever. Like, where do we go from here? Um, she came to Chicago then. And before going into the nursing home, she actually spent some time at my sister's house, my other sister, because uh, she was like, let's see before we go full into the nursing home. Like, let's see if we can make this a family environment. But um, my sister has two little kids and it was just too much to do at her house. And I was the single 29 year old bartender. So nobody even thought about me as like a potential caregiver. <laughs> um, but it, it, it is kind of the truth, you know, and at the time I wasn't really thinking of that for myself either because I was so unstable. Um, so yeah, then she was put into the nursing home. No, wow, that, what a journey. But yeah, that's so cool. That's a, what a great experience to be able to share with her too. Um, so when when did you become uh, officially? When did you become her caregiver? So it was March sixth, two thousand and seventeen. Uh, so my roommate actually, his mom had a stroke, and he moved into his childhood home to help take care of his mom. And so now I'm put in this situation where my gram's in a nursing home, I need a roommate, I don't know what I'm doing. And me and my grandma, really the connection was always there. My sisters say it, my mom says it. They're like, you two were like two peas in a pod your whole life. So I sat down with my family. I said, look, I know this is gonna be life changing and it's gonna be really hard, but 
my friends are having kids, you know, they're settling down. I'm like, I think I'm grown up enough to do this. <laughs> like, I think I can handle it, you know? So everyone was like, all right, like, what's the worst that can happen? She's already in a nursing home. <laughs> so like, <laughs> let's try it out. And uh, it's funny, we can laugh about it, but it, but, you know, that's how life happens sometimes. So oh everyone buckled up and uh, Graham's moved in with me, but here we are five years later and it's been the biggest blessing. Um, and yeah, I would do it over and over and over again. Oh, that is incredible. She's so lucky. This is <laughs> so lucky. Wow. Um, so, so then you were three years into your caregiving journey when COVID hit. Um, yeah exactly three years because everything kind of shut down in March right so yeah we had just celebrated three years together we had like a little dinner and oh wow yeah then life kind of came to a halt yeah so do you uh recall I know it's been a couple of years now uh believe it or not right um but do you recall your initial reactions when when the pandemic um hit and um particularly because I think it became very clear right away that the older adult population was um, the most affected by this. So what were your initial thoughts and reactions? Yeah, I remember the exact day. I remember like where I was, what I was doing. So I was bartending because it was St. Patrick's Day weekend. And here in Chicago, that's like the money maker. Um, and all these news stories kept coming out, coming out. And I'm in this bar with all these people. People started coming in with like gloves on their hand and everyone was saying, sanitize, sanitize. So I was freaking out. I was literally like talking to my boss. I'm like, if there's any way you don't need me, like, I just want to go home. I felt so uncomfortable being surrounded by people because we didn't know what was actually happening. Um, and then, so the fire marshal actually ended up shutting us down. We had too many people anyway inside the building. So I got lucky. I got to go home early. I went to my gram and then the next day, <clears throat> or it was like Monday it was, um, I had to go to my photo job. And so my gram had a caregiver come while I went to work during this time. And so I was at my photo job and it just was so eerie. There was just so much going on and nobody really knew. And so I called my boss at the photo job and I said, look, there's so many kids coming in and I'm just having a panic attack over here. I can't stop thinking about my grandma. So like, help, what, <laughs> what can I do? And she said, you know what? Your grandma's most important, go home and take care of her. So my boss covered my shifts for the next few days, but then the city shut down anyway. So I was able to stay home with my grandma. Um, and yeah, life really did change. My grandma and I used to go out to eat at least three days a week. We were like always going out to eat, always seeing people doing things. We would go to the Dollar Tree every day. Like the girl at the counter knew who we were. We were there all the time. Like we had our little routines, but it always involved going out. So now we're stuck indoors. We can't even see my sister or her kids, which is another thing that we did every single day. And I also was not a 24 seven caregiver. I was able to go to work and still see friends and do things. So now our whole world is literally changing. She's being isolated. I'm being isolated. I'm now the 24 seven caregiver. No one's coming to relieve me. And it just was kind of one thing after another. Yeah, that it, it does sound like it was a domino effect. And yeah. <laughs> especially as waves of information was coming in and um, I was curious about that, that indoor, like in-home caregiving, if you had that support with you initially, and it sounds like you did. Um, and then the transition to, um, so if you don't mind me asking, how, how was that juggled um, for you? So going from, so you were working your two jobs and then to, did you have to leave those jobs to then become 100% caregiving for your gramps? Is that how it worked? So the bar that I worked at actually ended up shutting down because with the pandemic and not being able to pay their bills, they actually ended up, so there was no job for me to go to at that point. As far as the photo job, there's no work from home from a portrait studio because you're taking photos. <laughs> so we, the portrait studio didn't open back up until October of 2020. And so that was that whole time I didn't have anywhere to go or nothing to do anyway. So I remained just 
full in contact with my grandma. I was trying my best to keep her busy and happy because her whole routine was taken away. So now I'm trying these new tricks of art and, and just really trying to figure out how to best give her um, what she's used to, the, the thriving environment and the interaction that she's so used to. So um, we stayed home for months and months and months. And then I think it was around June when my sister was like, we can't sit at home like we need to extend our circle so then my sister was like you guys are now in our bubble come on over and so we started spending the summer days at my sister's house which was such a blessing but um so when my photo studio job sorry granny's playing with her change <laughs> Uh, so when my photo studio job started back up, I had the decision of making, um, do I go back to this job where I was getting paid $1 more than I was paying the caregiver? So, <laughs> and that doesn't include my gas to my job and this and that and the other thing. So I really had gotten into this amazing groove with my grandma every day. And I was like, do I even want to? switch this up now that we're so comfortable and doing so well together do i want to add another dynamic because those in-home caregivers changed often and it wasn't always the most comfortable so um yeah i just made the decision to start doing freelance photography and to stop going into the studio so um, i got all my regulars uh, <laughs> that used to come and see me granny's on, on the run <laughs> but so um i built Okay, she'll be all right. She's just, she'll go back to her chair now. Sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I was building uh, a freelance environment with my regulars from the portrait studio. So on the weekends, my sister would take my grandma and I'd be able to make some money doing freelance. Um, but that wasn't until the, the middle of 2021. All of 2020, we did nothing. I was like, so, I mean, we didn't get, our vaccine until 2021. So 2020, the only people we saw were my sister and her two kids and my brother-in-law. Wow, that's pretty intense. Um, yeah. <laughs> did, did you notice a different, like, did your grams notice the difference? Um, did you notice a difference in her? Um, how, like, I, I guess I'm trying to ask is, since you were her caregiver and she knew you, uh, there was that sense of normalcy, right? But did she sense the shift in the, the change? And how did she handle that? Was there an impact there? Yeah, 100%. She was bored. She was so wow. bored. And I, like I said, she was always the life of the party. We would go out to dinner and she would be saying hi to every table. So now you have her sitting in front of a window and there's not even people walking around outside. Like it was so strange. And so she started getting very antsy and agitated and like, why are we doing this? Let's go, let's go. So we spent a lot of time in the car driving around. It was kind of the only thing I found that kept her kind of content. Um, but even that had its own problems because then we'd pass the Dollar Tree and she'd be like, let's go inside. And that, you know, it's so, so hard. Um, but at the time, I don't think I realized the progression of her disease until now we're getting kind of comfortable and i can look back and i can say wow march of 2020 was really the start when graham started to decline in her alzheimer's um she started losing more vocabulary and she started being more lethargic and it just really took a toll it, it took an impact on her wow that's pretty serious um and to be able to note that like to to note that that's when it started too that's pretty heavy um, uh, there's so much there. And uh, <laughs> so when you, when you took on the caregiving, um, uh, you know, how much goes into caregiving. Did you find that you had access to all of the resources that you needed to, uh, maintain the level of care that Grams needed during this time? To be completely honest, the year of 2020 was a burnout year for me uh, at by the end of the year, I felt just depleted of energy and life. I didn't know, I feel like many of us kind of had that same feeling, but um, 
I didn't know where even to turn because I didn't want strangers coming into my home. I didn't want, it was just so much that, um, I am lucky for online resources. I really feel like during the pandemic year, that's when I really dove into um, this caregiving community and we kind of all felt that and we were able to connect online. So I do feel very fortunate for the resources. Sorry, I didn't know if you could hear Grand, so I don't. <laughs> She's talking to her baby. Uh, <laughs> But I am really thankful for the online community. So during the pandemic, that was my main um, savior. It was the online. She's talking about going out. <laughs> she, she ready. See? She's ready. <laughs> she she said, we'll have fun. Right. <laughs> and we're going out to eat. Hi, honey. You happy? She's dancing over here. <laughs> <laughs> she's so cute um <laughs> sorry <laughs> she's really gonna go for it now so hang on <laughs> it sounds like the support was there but did you have access to like actual resources like w whether it be financial resources obviously you didn't have access to people in terms of caregiving support but all of the items that you made, doctor's appointments, those sorts of things. Like, was that available to you at this time or um, did you um, make those froze as well? No, I felt like our whole life was frozen time, uh, to be completely honest. It was really just the uncomfort of knowing, like once things started opening back up, even the doctors and stuff, I was like, our doctor works in a hospital. I didn't want to bring my gram to the hospital. And then it was like, they weren't doing home health. We had to do, my gram doesn't need a visual doctor like that. She needs an actual person to see what's going on in her body and stuff. So yeah, that was really difficult. Um, I am fortunate because more of the online resources, there's a company or a program or nonprofit, I should say, there's a nonprofit <laughs> called Hilarity for Charity. Um, and they actually gave me a respite grant at the beginning of 2021. So I felt extremely fortunate that after that whole year of kind of fading away, I was able to then start to rebuild um, my life and our life together as care partners because it was something that I decided to take on full time forever now. Um, so yeah. Well, that, that leads me into um, my next question, and it's incredible that you were able to receive that um, yeah. that support. And uh, just this would be our last question. Um, and do you think that the pandemic has caused long-term effects on your caregiving journey? Um, is this is this uh, you know the mark of a a new way of caregiving for you or or is this kind of just a a blip in the road and things will go back to normal what i know we're still in it but what's your sense for me the pandemic changed everything and it changed the way that i view my caregiving relationship with my grams now and how i see our future it really changed my whole perspective on what's important in life too because i think about those three years prior to the pandemic, when I was going to the portrait studio, stopping home, making sure my gram was good, getting ready for the new caregiver to come, going to bartend at night, it was just insanity. And um, and and for what, you know, to, to pay for a roof over my head, you know, it just doesn't seem, that whole hustle and bustle lifestyle really kind of brought me back to, I get to share love every day with my grandma. And, and yes, I don't have as much funds as I had as a bartender slinging drinks, but I have a peace of mind and I have um, kind of goals and a purpose that I never saw before. And so really the pandemic, it had its total negatives because yes, it was the start of my grandma's decline with dementia. I mean, it's always progressing this disease, but that was really a pivotal moment for it. Um, but then again, it did bring on blessings. So I always see things in two lights. You know, you have to see it is for what it is, but then you can also see the beauty that things can bring from dark times. So quote that, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. I, I, wow, wow. Your, your whole, I mean, 
your spirit is incredible already, but I, I, the journey that you've been on and what, what you're able to gain, I'm so thankful that you have a platform because people do need to hear this. And it's, it's this alternative to, um, uh, sometimes that narrative that you hear all the time that yes, it's hard yet, yeah, but the work that you're doing is so important and the love that you get to share with your, you know, in this case, your grams, uh, you know, that continued, um, and you're growing with her versus, you know, she's progressing on her own by herself. Um, yeah. the fact that she has a companion with her that she can trust and love is just, uh, I mean, uh, it's incredible and it's, it's, I mean, it needs to be highlighted and I'm so, I'm so thankful that you're sharing with us today because um, it really, you deserve all the support in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I really feel fortunate that uh, I have the relationship I have with my grandma and that my family is so supportive. I really couldn't do this without my sister and my mom and the help that we receive. Um, yeah, every day. So that's, thank you so much. No, thank you. And then I guess my last, um, uh, how can people follow along with you? I mean, I'll put all of your, um, all of your, I know you're very active on Instagram. That's how I've connected with you. I, I'll add that to um, the information down below in your bio. But is there any way that um, people watching this who want to support can support? <laughs> yeah, so you can find us at Life with Grams anywhere, uh, TikTok, Instagram, Gmail. We also have a website, <laughs> lifewithgrams.info, and there you can kind of find more about like um, different events, uh, fundraisers, and different things that we'll be doing um, on there. You also can find all of our podcasts and different kind of events that I talk on on the website. Um, and yeah, that's about it. That's great. Thank you so much. And I, I really appreciate you being here with us today. I've had a great time talking with you. Me as well. Thank you, Molly.